So remember that completing the square means we are going to find this number. What is that number? There's only one that will work. That will make, make it so that when we factor this quadratic, given whatever number this is, we get the same exact factor. Like they're identical to each other. We do that because we want to write it as x plus this squared. So that when we have this in an equation, we can take the square root of both sides. Of course, this is not an equation, so we're not going to solve anything. But we are going to uh, find the number that goes there and factor it that way. Okay. So if this is going to happen, if we're going to be able to factor it this way, then these numbers need to be identical. And when we multiply this out, we're going to get x squared plus that thing times x plus that same thing times x. We know that so far. What should these two add up to? To 12. And if they add up to 12 and we know they are exactly the same number, there's only one number that will do that, right? What number is, well, itself and it adds up to 12? Six, two numbers that are exactly the same that add up to 12. Six, six, and six. Those are the only two numbers that can do that. That's the only way that we can write, that we can like put this together and write it as x plus six squared, if we have six and six. If they're different, of course, we can't say squared. So once we know that this is six, because this is 12, so this would have to be six, this would always have to be half of whatever this is, then what will this constant come out to be? 36, this is 36. Okay, I want to show you like, a visual of this. Right, uh, if I can find this thing. So these uh, algebra tiles again. Um, right, so we want to, in the workspace, we want to have some polynomial that we have to factor. Okay, so we're going to have x squared, what was it, plus 12x? That's a lot of x's. Uh, let's There's uh, 12 x's. Okay, does that make sense so far? Okay. So we got x squared plus 12 x. That's what problem number four gave to us. We want to figure out what number would have to you know, go in there. And the thing that we need to keep in mind is, is what we want to have two identical factors x plus something, x plus. So remember when we were factoring these, that we would we put the x squared down here, or if we had multiple x squares, we would kind of arrange them around like that. Um, and then we would, you know, this, this side would give us one factor, because this side is x in length. Do you remember that? This side is x, and then we're going to have plus some number, because we're going to set up, we're going to, um, move some x's here, some x's over here. So this is going to be one factor, this is going to be the other factor, this side's going to be x, this side's going to be x, and this is going to be, you know, plus, I don't know how many yet, right? Plus something. And plus something. And the one thing that we know is that we want both of those sides of this rectangle here to be exactly the same. We want it to be a square. Right? That's why this is called completing the square. So we've got 12 of these x's to kind of put between here and there. So how many will I put here and how many will I put here so that both sides are equal to each other? Of these. 
draw 12 of them. How many will I put here, and how many will I put here so that this side and this side are equal to each other? Daniel? Six. Six of them. So I'll put uh, here. Now visually you can see what we're doing. We're, we want to factor this quadratic. I put x squared down there. We put some x's there and there, right? So that they add up to 12x. But we do it in such a way that these two sides are exactly equal to each other. So this side is x plus 6 and this side is x plus 6. How many of those little 1 squares would fit in here? How many would I need to fill in this square? This side it's how long? For <coughs> for the one squares? No, of the wait, what do you add what do you ask me? How many The only thing that could fit in here is a bunch of these. Right? Oh. One of those goes right there. If I try to put like x squares or something, it's not gonna fit exactly right. So how many of these will fit in here? Twenty four. Why twenty four? Okay, six going this way, six going this way. Well, like whatever fits inside here, this region here, it's going to be a square, right? Six by six square. So, Danielle? 36. This side is six, this side is six. How many are going to fit in there? Well, just the area of this region here, 6 multiplied by 6. Because 6 of them are here. Six. And we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of those like, towers of, of, of 6. So that is, see, that's the thing that the you know, number four was asking for. What, what number, how many of these do you need so that you can make a square, right? And you can see, like, visually, why it would be called completing the square. Because you figure out how many of those units do I put in there so that it makes a square. And now I factored it. It's x plus 6 and x plus 6. x plus 6. times x plus 6. So I can write it as x plus 6 squared. Alright, let's have another question. Let's just go back to this one, because I'll pull up another one of these. We'll see that it won't work out as well. At least it won't work out very well in this picture. So we've got, we've got x squared plus 5x. So I'll just bring out 3, 4, 5. So number 8 is starts x squared plus 5x. x squared down there. Now, I want to arrange these guys so that both sides of this rectangle that I'm making will be equal to each other. 
But where, like what problem am I having? Trying to find two numbers that multiply each other to make five. Add to make five. Or add to get five. Two identical numbers that add to make five, right? 2.5. 2.5. I would have to take this x here and cut it down the middle. Right? If I like had those pieces of paper, I'd have to cut it lengthways down the middle so that I put half of it there and half of it there. But at least that shows me what my factors have to be. This side, this side right here, would have to be x plus 2.5, or x plus 5 divided by 2. And the other side would be the same. These two sides would always be uh, x plus half of however many x's I started with. So when we multiply this out, we get x squared plus 5 halves x plus 5 halves x plus, where are we going to get this last number? Where does that come from? We've multiplied binomials together before, right? Like, lots of times. So where is this number going to come from? So that number is going to come from when we multiply 5 halves times 5 halves. Okay, so that's maybe not the easiest thing to do in our heads. So we'll just write 5 halves times 5 halves there. We get x squared plus 5 halves x plus 5 halves x, or 2.5 plus 2.5. That's that would be that would come out to be 5x. Plus 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 2 is 4. So that number that we were looking for from the very beginning was 25 over 4. Okay, so every time we complete the square, what we're doing is we're trying to break, well, find the number that, right, that fits right there so that we can factor this polynomial into two identical factors. To do that, this number always has to be half of this, right? Come down here, half of that there and there. <coughs> always, always. We go back here, we see the same thing. Half goes there and there. Okay. And the number that we're supposed to get is just from multiplying this out, multiplying this binomial this by this binomial, x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 36. So there's our 36. There's our 25 over 4. Whatever happens when we multiply that half times that half, that's what we get. Okay, so what other questions? Can we solve any equations you can see in the square? Any questions from that section? Just as a practice, if you're going to use completing the square, uh, it's a pretty good idea to just go ahead and get rid of that constant, cancel it out, move it to the other side, whatever you want to call it. Right, so we've got this, blank right there. this. Finding this number is what we've done in the last two problems. The idea here is we want to have v minus something. And we want to have that squared. Because on the other side, we'll have some number, and we'll take the square root 
of both sides to cancel out that square. The idea behind the whole thing. That's why we're doing this. So remember what I said before, the only way for that to happen, the only reason we can write this, write this as squared, you know, square means two identical things multiplied by each other. If I write two squared, it means two times two. If I write five squared, it means five times five. If I write v minus something squared, that's equal to v minus that thing times v minus that exact same thing. These two things always have to add up to that guy right there, which means we take half of that number and it goes in both places. 3.5. 3.5. That's half of 7. Okay. Why is it half? Because of this. Because we're wanted to factor out like this, this would be our dream scenario if we could factor it out like that, because then we can take the square root. And why is it 3.5? Because when we multiply these factors back out, we get v squared minus 3.5v minus 3.5v. Okay, and then we'll get a number here. v squared, well 3.5v, negative 3.5v minus 3.5v is negative 7v which it needs to be, because of course it would need to multiply back out to the polynomial we were given. What will we wind up getting here when we multiply this out? Where will this number come from? Courtney? Taking negative 3.5 times negative 3.5. Exactly, negative 3.5 times negative 3.5. Of course, negative times negative will be positive, that's why this number will always be positive because these numbers will be exactly the same. They'll go positive times positive, negative times negative. So we get this positive, what? 3.5 times 3.5. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. in there, right? It wasn't part of the original equation. Just threw it in there. But if it was there, if there was a 12.5 or 12.25 there, it would factor just like this. V minus 3.5 times V minus 3.5. And that's good because we can write that as V minus 3.5 squared. And take square root of both sides and continue on from there finding our solution. Does that make sense? questions about that? I know that's a typical one because 7 is not an even number, so it doesn't come out nicely. So then what would go after that? Well, that's what we're about to figure out. Oh. So I'm like pausing for a second. I'm going to make sure that the completing the square part makes sense before we do more than that. that it didn't make sense and you want to stop me, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, okay, so to start with, we subtracted one from both sides, got that out of there, and then we just like left this blank, and we figured out exactly what we needed this number to be. And like I said, this 12.25 was not part of the original equation. We added it in there. Like we just brought it in there, because if we had that plus 12.25, it factors just like we want. So I've added 12.25 to the left side, so what do I need to do also? Yeah? Add it to the other side. Add it to the other side. I was going to do the same thing to both sides. <coughs> so on the left side, I found a perfect number so that it will factor exactly the way that I want it to into two identical factors. On the right side, now I have negative 1 plus 12.25, so that's just 11.25. And so on this side, we take the square root. This is the whole idea. We wanted to take the square root of both sides. So 
We take the square root of the square that cancels it out. That's why we're doing this, because it just simply, cleanly cancels out that square. On this side, we have the, the square root plus or minus the square root of 11.25. Remember, when we take the square root of both sides, we always get the plus or minus the square root. And we also almost have v by itself. What do we need to do to get v by itself? Add 3.5. Add 3.5 to both sides. V equals, so we add it, we add it, so we get a positive 3.5 plus or minus the square root of 11.25. Take 3.5 and add the square root of 11.25. Take 3.5 and subtract the square root of 11.25. And we get 3.5 plus the square root of 11.25. We get negative 0.146. That's what we get when we do negative 3.5 plus the square root of 11.25. Minus the square root of eleven point two five. Get them by just copying that, changing this to minus negative six point two five. So negative point one four six and negative six point eight four. Those are our solutions. suggest that if you feel like this is difficult, you're right. I mean, it's a tricky thing to do. It's not like you can just snap. Get it. Okay. But if you're concerned with understanding it better and having a pencil out, writing this down, working through it with me, act like it's your goal to understand it. A lot of times it seems like the goal is to not have to quit, which is not going to work out so well. So, shall we do another one that we all at least work through and copy down? And at least do that much. The very, very least. Okay? Let's do one that works out a little nicer. this one be easier than the last one? negative 7 there is not the constant that we're going to want. Unless the person writing this problem specifically figured out what the number needed to be and then put it there for you, it's more likely that if you just chose a random number, it's not going to be the one that we want to be part of this quadratic. Because we want a very specific number. And I'll explain again what that specific number is going to so that we can factor this into two. What, what about these factors? What's very important about these two factors? Not just any old factors. Yeah? 
That they're what? That they're the same. That they're the same, like both the things you said were, were correct. They're exactly the same, so that we can write them as that factor squared times itself, right? Squared means times itself. So if we're going to be able to write it as squared, it needs to be times itself, identical, two identical factors. Okay. Whatever half of negative 8 is, that's what should go right there. Maybe let's write this down. Factors must be identical. That's very important. That, then that tells me that those two numbers have to be the same number, exactly the same number. Copy pasted. Whatever is here gets copied over to this factor here so that we can write it as k minus 4 squared. Alright, why is it? Okay, so, so it has to be identical. So why does that mean that it would be half of negative 8? Because when we multiply these together, what do we get? Somebody multiply these together. <coughs> plus 16 at the end. But remember when we multiply parentheses of things together like with, that are added and subtracted, like we've got polynomial times polynomial, we distribute the k to everything. Then the, once we've distributed the k to everything in this parentheses, which there's only two things. So k squared minus negative 4k? Yeah. And then we distribute the negative 4. Yeah. Then we get another minus 4k. And then we get your 16. Okay. So you can see, remember how these two numbers, when we multiply this out, we're going to get the two k terms by multiplying this times k and this times k. So these two, when we put them together, these like terms, they need to come out to be the k term. And that k term in this problem is negative 8. So these two numbers have to be identical. k terms come from this number times k and this number times k, and they have to add to negative 8. They're identical and they add to negative 8. Identical and add to negative 8. They're identical and they add to negative 8. Or that in general, they're identical and they add up to whatever this k term is. If you have two identical numbers that add up to this number, that's just another way of saying half of a number. Two identical numbers that add to 12, that would be 6 plus 6. That's half of 12. Two identical numbers that add up to negative 8, negative 4, and negative 4. So then, we, we've already done this work. What does this come out to be if we can factor it into our two desired exact, exactly identical factors? What would this number turn out to be when we multiply these two together? Danielle. What? 16. So we add 16 to the other side because we just by putting 16 there, I've added 16 to the left side. So now that we put the 16 in there, factors perfectly, factors beautifully, exactly the way we wanted it to factor, two identical factors, x minus 4 times x minus 4. And 16 plus 7 is 23. So we've done all this work. We've, we've tried really hard and, and found exactly the number that we needed to have in here. Okay. Found this, this perfect, beautiful thing right here. So they could write it as k minus 4 squared. Why? Now what are we going to do now? This step where we have k minus 4 squared. Alright, right. we cancel out the square root. Right. No factoring. No trying to 
figure out exactly what numbers multiply to this and add to that. Right? No saying I can't do it because it's not factorable. Right? We've set it up so it factors exactly the way we want so we can use that square root trick. And we take the square root of the other side. K, no, that's not what we said. K minus four equals plus or minus the square root of 23. Add four to both sides. Or plus or minus 23. Or plus the square root of 23. Or minus the square root of 23. You're welcome to do that yourself. I'll make you watch me put that in the calculator and tell you what the decimals are. x squared plus 8x. Okay. And the way that we learned about factoring in the first place was to represent this polynomial with these tiles, or with these, uh, these blocks, or however you want to call them. And go backwards and, and set it up so that the, we have two sides that uh, represent our factors. But in this case, we, we get to pick that number, that, that constant number that gets added on the end. We want this to work out so that we have both sides are identical. So I'm going to put 4 here, and 4 over here. Okay. Now, this is a little bit harder to see because they're negatives, and there's not really a good way to look at a negative like a negative block and a, a negative rectangle. These are all negative, so we make them all negatives. And there's our, our minus 8x, right? So if there's a negative 4x and a negative 4x, it splits in half perfectly. So how many little one blocks are going to fit in here? Sixteen of them. So sixteen. When we force this thing to be split up into two identical factors, when we multiply those factors back together, we figure out what this magic number has to be. It's got to be sixteen. The reason we do that is because now we can write this as x minus 4 times itself, or squared, and then we can take the square root of both sides, and then it makes our life a lot easier. We just cancel out the square root instead of having to factor it out, or whatever other approach. And in fact, sometimes you can't factor it, like I was saying, you can't factor some of these. Uh, you would never get these decimal and fraction answers that we've been getting by factoring. Because it's not possible to factor. Okay, so the, the difficult thing about this is that we want to, this to factor in two identical factors, and we'll usually put an x and an x there, right? The two identical factors would be like x plus something and x plus, they're the same thing. But why can we not do that right now? Well, if I multiply 
multiply these together, what will I get? What will be the first thing I get? Multiply this by that. X squared. Is that what we have here? No. And we have two x squared. To get two x squared, I'd have to put like two there. Or a number that multiplies a, a different set of numbers that this times this equals two. Uh, and they have to be identical. This is like turning into a, kind of a headache. So instead of having a two there, let's cancel out that two so that we have a one there. So that we, we can write it like this so we get x times x is x squared, not two x squared. So how do we cancel out that two? Divide by two, divide this side by two, and this side by two. Get x squared minus four x minus seven equals zero divided by two is zero. Seven to both sides, leave ourselves that little blank spot to fill in, like we've done a few times today. What will these two factors be? X squared here? X. Oh, X and then what? And then two. Two. Negative. Negative. That's what I would want. Negative two, right? Because negative two X and negative 2x adds to our negative 4x. All right, so here comes the revealing moment. When we figure out what that number has to be, we know it has to factor as x minus 2 times x minus 2. When we multiply this together, we'll get x squared minus 2x minus 2x. Of course we will. It's exactly what we wanted. We want to get negative 4x. So since that's what those factors have to be, what will this number be? Negative 2 times negative 2. The last part of the distribution, you get x times x, x times negative 2, negative 2 times x, negative 2 times negative 2. So we know that has to be 4. Now I brought in this 4. I have added 4 to the left side, so I have to add 4 to the right side. x squared minus 4. Well, I'm going to write that and factor it. x minus 2 squared. Right, this side's going to be 11. 11. Square root of both sides. X minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. Add 2 to both sides. 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. That's a perfectly fine answer. You can leave it just like that if you want, because that's exactly right. Or you can put 2 plus square root of 11 and 2 minus square root of 11, or you can find the decimals. All of those are fine with me, as long as you round your decimals to at least two decimal places. Yep, you divide everything by 3. Both sides by 3. Well, 35? Mm -hmm. 35? 33. 33. Yeah, you divide everything by 3. And 33. Go through this one quickly. Basically, the whole. It's the same. You just divide everything by 3. The only thing is this 20 is not divisible by 3, so you get not a nice number there at the end. Get w squared minus 6w minus 20 over 3 equals 0. w squared minus 6w plus, and we're about to figure this out, equals, we're going to add 20 thirds to both sides. 20 thirds. Side. I know this is going to have to factor as x minus and x minus what? Three minus three, x minus three. Okay. What will this be then when I factor it this way? This will be what? What? Nine. Okay, add nine to this side, add nine to this side. Okay, but we need a common denominator, so we'll turn this into thirds. This will be 27 thirds. This will be 47 thirds. We got x minus three squared equals Seven thirds the square root x minus three plus or minus the square root of forty-seven thirds x equals three plus or minus the square root of forty-seven thirds and you want to use your calculator.
calculated that. Do that just to make sure you take the square root of 47 thirds in parentheses. Put parentheses around 47 thirds when you take the square root. Divided by 2. So just take B divided by 2. Right? Okay, it's kind of a tricky one. If I multiply these together, then what will I get here? Of course, there's not, well, there's a 2 there, but there's also a B. Where's this number going to come from? When you multiply these together, this will come from doing what? by 2 and to find this number, you're just going to be the result of multiplying whatever that half of that number is by itself. So I always suggest you just throw down two parentheses, x, x, as long as that's a 1 in front. If it's not 1, you need to divide by whatever that number is to get it to be 1. And uh, yeah, just take half of that number, put it there, put it there, multiply that number by itself, and there you go, and that's what goes right there. Get out a piece of paper, please. Okay, so we're going to use completing the square, um, which one way to say that is we want to find what number should go here so that this will factor as a perfect square, as two identical factors multiplied by each other. Uh, let's just get rid of the 5 before we start. Move it to the other side. And that way we'll just have a blank spot to fill in exactly how we want. Okay. Uh, what number is going to go over there? Well, it will be decided by what, when we mass, multiply these factors together, what number will that make? Okay. So, what, if these two factors are identical, then what numbers go here and there? Okay. Yeah. Negative six. I'll remind you and remind you and remind you and remind you over and over and over again why that is. You might remember that it's supposed to be half, okay? And, and hopefully you always remember everything correctly and never get confused. But if you tend to get confused and not remember everything 100% correctly, we should know why that's half. Because when we multiply this out, uh, we need to come up with negative 12x there. The other thing is, of course, these have to be identical. That's the whole idea. So when we multiply this out, we got x squared. That's x squared. And minus 6x. Minus 6x. Okay? 
That's exactly what we, what we want to get, negative 12x. Okay. Um, so when we do fully multiply these out together, what number does that mean we need to have here? So we've added 36 to, 36 was not part of the original equation. We have added a new 36 to the left side, so we need to add 36 to the right side. 36 plus 4 is 40. Okay. Here it is, the whole reason why we did this, so we can write it as x minus 6 squared. So that we can do what now? Take the square root. You got it? Take the square root. X minus 6 equals plus or minus 40, or sorry, the square root of 40. Add 6 to both sides. Perfect, perfectly fine answer. Perfectly exact answer. We can find the decimals and uh, the person's quiz or, or review that you're uh, marking may have done that, so let's go over that. 6 plus the square root of 40, 12.32. Again, only we will subtract. Subtract. Negative point three two. Alright. Two solutions. Any questions? Very similar to the problem before, except for uh, we did a couple of these before the review started. What should we do to start with? Yeah, we, wanna, we want this number in front of x squared to be 1, so we'll divide by that to get that to happen. If you did that first, that's, that's good. Really quickly before that, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Because I see if I do that, I'll get an even number on the other side. So we'll be divisible by 2. I'll make it slightly easier. That equals uh, 10. So then we'll divide everything by 2. We'll get x squared plus 15 halves x equals. two identical factors, and as we've said quite a few times now, this guy here, it's identical numbers that go here and here, will be half of this number, right? half of 15 halves. And maybe you did 15 halves and you got uh, seven and a half, and you just took seven and a half divided by two, that's fine. Or you can do 15 halves uh, divided by two, that's 15 halves, times one half, that's 15 over 4, 15 over 4, that's 15 over 4, so we get x squared plus 15 um, halves x plus, it's going to be 15 fourths times 15 fourths x squared plus 15 halves x plus 225 over 16. Or maybe like in your problems you're working with decimals, you're writing the decimals down, that's fine, it's perfectly fine. So we need to add 225 over 16 on both sides. So this is going to be um, 80 over 16, that's what 5 is. I'm going to give it a denominator of 16. Plus 225 over 16. So we get uh, 305 over 16 equals x plus 15 fourths squared.
8 square root of both sides. x plus 15 fourths equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 5 over 16. Equals going to subtract 15 fourths from both sides. I want to just real quick, before I show you what the quadratic formula looks like, I want you to remind you what our solution looked like for this one. Um, we got this, you know, funky fraction, and we got this uh, square root plus or minus the square root here. Um, if I if I take this guy right here and I bring it over here and I rewrite it. I can get negative 15 over 4 uh, plus or minus. Now, the square roots, what's up? Oh, just saying hi. Oh, hi. How's it going? We can take the square root, when we have a fraction, take the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Over the square root of 16. What's the square root of 16? Four, negative 15 over 4 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 5 over 4. Now these have common denominators, right? Now they have the common denominator of 4, that's no coincidence. Um, negative 15, that means that what we could do is, you know, is add these as fractions with common denominators. We get two fractions out of that, one where we add the square root of 305 to negative 15, one where we subtract the square root of 305 from negative 15. So we would add and subtract the square root of 305, and that would all be over 4. Now, think for a second. You can use, like, imagine I put any quadratic equation in front of you, even though it would maybe be really gross and disgusting to try and do this. You can use completing the square on absolutely any quadratic equation. Right? Whatever is in front of x squared, you divide everything by that. Then you move c over to the other side. Right? That constant, you move it over there. Then you complete the square, you add that number to both sides, and you do the same thing every time to every quadratic equation. So if we were to do that, if we were to use completing the square on this, jx squared plus bx plus c. Like if we're given the quadratic equation, we could write, we could always get it to look like this. Right? If we couldn't, it wouldn't be a quadratic equation. But you could always have something times x squared plus something times x plus a constant equals zero. Okay. Um, even if it was x squared plus 5 equals 2. Now that doesn't look like that. But if we subtract 2 from both sides, uh, we get a uh, 3. Now there's 0 over here. Then I can just fill that in with a 0x. And now b would we'll just be 0. All quadratic equations can be written to look like this. Um, so if we use completing the square on both sides, we would wind up getting x by itself, just like this, where we got x by itself, x equals whatever x equals this thing. So it would look like this, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. So 
this comes from completing the square just with no numbers in there. It's, well, I can show you. But the four comes from doing and completing the square on this thing, meaning leaving it as A and B and C rather than having any numbers be in there. Like if I put specific numbers in there, we could mess around and do the completing the square and solve for x, right? Just like we did for the homework and we did for the review. You can use completing the square. If you use completing the square on this equation, where a, b, and c are variables, where they could just be, you can fill anything in for a, b, and c. I can either put a, b, and c in right now and then use completing the square and solve it. Or I left them as a, b, and c, completed the square, and now I can take that a, b, and c from whatever equation that you're given and plug them in here. Put the b right there, it's a negative whatever that is, the opposite of that number. And I'll take that same number, square it, subtract four times a times c, put that right there. Put a down here with two, two times a in the denominator. There we go. And we'll solve it just the same. So let's go back. Let's grab a couple of things. This is the solution we found from the review. Let's also get the original equation. So we're going to use the quadratic equation, or quad, sorry, the quadratic formula on this quadratic equation and solve it. Now notice, this quadratic equation is for an equation that looks like this, meaning that one side is zero. So what's the first thing we need to do with this equation so we can use the formula on it? Subtract 13 from both sides. Got to get one side to be zero. 2x squared plus 15x. of a, b, and c into this formula. So x equals, it's negative, it's always negative. We always put a negative in front of this first thing. What's b in this equation? OK, right, 15. b is just the number. Right. See, x is x, b is the number. So negative 15 plus or minus the square root of, all right, what goes to this? What's B? It's 15. 15 squared, square it, minus 4, right? There's always that 4 there, times what's A? See right there, that's A. What's A in that equation? 2. The number that's in front of X squared, the, the coefficient of X squared. Like, even if I rearranged these, if I put 15x there and 2x squared there, whatever number is multiplied by x is still b, whatever number is multiplied by x squared is still a. a is 2, and what is c? We've got to go with this one, where it's equal to 0. Negative 10, very good. Not, not just 10, but negative 10. Over 2 times a is 2, said that already. Now look at Look at the answer that we got here. It's starting to look more and more like this. It's equal 
equals negative 15 plus or minus the square root of, this is 225. Negative times negative is going to be positive, so we'll put a positive there. It's going to be 40, uh, right, 40 times 2. started with those specific numbers and we did the square to solve for x. So now any quadratic equation that we're given, simple or difficult, we can solve with, well first of all, with completing the square. I'm going to use completing the square on this, the general form of a quadratic equation, become the quadratic form. It's got to be written like this. If you want to follow left to right, then you need to be right exactly like this. With the x squared first, the x next, and then uh, the number last, and it's equal to 0. So maybe it would help to write these in that order. And then we can see this is a, this is b, this is c. Or we can say, well, I know a is always multiplied by x squared, so this is a, and this is b. So I, don't, I want that to mix those up. Negative. Negative what? Always negative. Always there's a negative in front of it. Negative what? Three. B, right? Negative B. That's B. It's front of it. It's multiplied by x. So three plus or minus the square root of what's there? What's that? No, it's B again. Oh, x equals negative B. That's the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So it's 3 squared minus 4 times a. What's a? 5 times c. What's c? 2. 2 times a, which we just said was negative 5. minus the square root of 49, negative 10. What's the square root of 49? 7. So we have negative 3 plus or minus 7 in the numerator. So we'll add 7 and subtract 7 to get our two different numerators, and they'll both be over negative 10. Negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4 over negative 10. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10 over negative 10. So 4 divided by negative 10 is negative uh, 2 fifths. And negative 10 divided by negative 10 is positive 1. Sometimes your solutions will come out nice. By nice, I mean fractions and maybe whole numbers. I didn't ask you to back up yet. So stop. Okay. So if these come out nice, what that tells you is that we actually could have factored this to start with, rather than using quadratic. Uh, 
plus 2 and x minus 1. So negative 5x times, or sorry, um, should just be uh, plus 1 and should be. x plus 2 and x minus 1, then if you multiply them together, you'll get, um, maybe we should do negative x plus 1. Uh, that'll work. Okay. So if we multiply those together, we have negative 5x squared plus 3x plus 2. Uh, if we set each of those factors equal to 0, 5x plus 2 equals 0, and negative x plus 1 equals 0, we'll get negative 2 fifths and positive 1. So that'll happen. Sometimes you'll throw the numbers in there. The square root will actually have a square root. And so that'll come out nice, which means you could have factored it. And keep an eye out for uh, problems that you could factor. Factoring is faster. If you can recognize that this thing is factorable, it's faster than using the quadratic formula. Mm -hmm. Or if you could quickly just kind of like move numbers over to one side and take the square root, that would be much faster than using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is just faster than maybe like a hard completing the squares problem. Okay. So remember, write them in the correct order. Square, x squared first, x next, and c. And if you're, one, one big thing here is, if your b is a negative number and you do negative b, if b is negative, you get negative, negative b. So that'll turn out to be positive. Thanks so much for that. All right, thanks guys.